Hola mi gente, ¿cómo están? Mi nombre es Alba Mar, me pueden decir Alba. El canal se llama Seriela, estamos aquí para hablar de libros, algunos de ellos en español, desde Puerto Rico. Hello, my name is Alba Mar, you may call me Alba. The channel name is Seriela, we're here to talk about books and some of them in Spanish from Puerto Rico, but not today because I'm going to do Cromwell a thon. Yes, which is a read along uh, that is being hosted by Jason at Old Blues Chapter and Verse. Uh, during the first three months of, uh, of this year because we are reading uh, Hilary Mantel's uh, series on uh, Cromwell or the Tudor age I guess anyway uh, first of all let me explain I have my glass of water here because this uh, works very well to tell me when the uh, aftershocks are serious enough to get me out of the house and I have my portable radio for the news and uh, if I remember I'll link up uh, the latest aftershocks uh, of which there was just one it's a little bit after eight o'clock in the morning six o'clock in the morning was the one that got me out of bed uh, this morning got my timer on five minutes for uh, dear Mint McCullough and five minutes for Hilary Mantel. Now, uh, I had started this in December, but when I heard that uh, there was going to be a read-along for Hilary Mantel starting in January, I decided to read uh, Thomas Cromwell, A Revolutionary Life by Dear Mid McCullough, and I am certainly glad that I did because it gave me all the historical context uh, and more that I needed. As I mentioned uh, before in a recent video, I am still reeling, reeling from uh, this book. Uh, I am a believer and uh, of the Protestant persuasion and I had heard for example of the Inquisition but I didn't know the other side of the story and uh, how the English Protestant uh, persuasion came up and at what cost to human life I'm still reeling I'm show you some of the doodles that I put in the margins of this book. First of all, separation of church and state has never, ever had more significance to me than after reading this book. Yeah, that was my expression at a lot of uh, the things that were happening uh, at that time. Shaking my head. Oh my God, the pandering to the nobles and to the people with power, especially Henry, and this. No. And he was the first person with his dry wit because this man, this man has some dry wit about him, which was the only thing that got me through uh, this gory, bloody period in history. Uh, yeah, he mentioned his ambiguity, uh, Cromwell's, I love that euphemistic term, ambiguity, yeah. Uh, and I had mentioned before that uh, I thought, well, maybe that ambiguity had to do with, um, with the fact that he became a lawyer and uh, he had learned to represent different sides of, of different issues. I also was, uh, I also was uh, impressed by how rapacious, uh, how rapacious uh, that reformation was in terms of uh, acquiring land and properties and uh, I finally learned what uh, enclosure meant and the commons. Yeah, uh, learned a lot through this book. And I'm glad that I read it before I read 
wolf haul because as I identify of all the videos that I've watched on Cromwellathon, right? I've identified most with uh, Peg at the Book Prize Addict and Natalie uh, from Australia. And uh, yeah, because as much as you would like to admire, right, uh, the author's consideration of your intelligence as a reader, that throwing you into the deep end of the pool without any historical context is to me like throwing a child into the deep end of the pool and, you know, having him uh, sputter around and hoping he won't drown. Yeah. Uh, I can understand why people have uh, picked this up numerous times and put it down. Uh, if uh, I hadn't had the background of this book, you know, I might have put it down too because uh, when she started uh, throwing names around willy-nilly, like for example Stephen Gardner, uh, at least I knew who Stephen Gardner was, and the Duke of Norfolk, and Suffolk, and you know other uh, characters that turn up in the book. I'm glad that she has uh, this she has these cast of characters here at the beginning. That helps out a lot. And uh, the genealogical tree here, the tutors and, and, and the contenders. Yeah, that helps a lot too. Uh, I, I realize that Hilary Mantel is, has every right as an author, right? Uh, to flesh out and make Cromwell attempt to make Cromwell more human. Yeah. And uh, I've seen that happen in many, you know, in many works of art. For example, uh, I compare it to my favorite historical K dramas in which, uh, in which bloody regimes and, and leaders of bloody regimes are, are what, what <laughs> some people call it, gray areas, you know. Let's try not to be black and white. Let's, let's do the gray areas, you know, and try to humanize these bloody despots. Yeah. I've seen that happen in K-drama a lot. And so when, um, you know, I realize that that's what she's doing here. And she herself uh, talks, repeats ambiguity right here on page 154, the science of ambiguity, which is a wonderful euphemism, okay? The fact that he knew <laughs> Machiavelli calls him Niccolo. <laughs> They were on those terms. Yep. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to do as I uh, read Wolf Hall, frankly. I try to remember uh, my experience with uh, historical Korean drama and uh, how some of those characters are humanized. And um, as a matter of fact, the chapter that has to do with the occult, the occult history of Britain, yeah, a lot of societies, right, have their occult history, and Korea is one of them, and there are quite a few historical dramas in which those allusions to uh, fantastical creatures 
uh, demigods are, you know, are presented. Yeah. One of the last ones that I was watching uh, alluded to fantastic creatures in the formation of the different kingdoms in, uh, in Korea. So that, that part was uh, nothing new to me. And uh, I was, I was uh, struck by uh, also the symbolism of, of, the, of the serpent. Yeah, woman, serpent, yes. Those are mythical themes, you know, throughout history. I've watched a lot of the videos, and uh, the most heartwarming one to me is Roz and her family. I will link it down below. Uh, I find that so heartwarming uh, that uh, the family should get together and uh, discuss books. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, I'm going to continue reading Wolf Hall. I hope, I hope that I can come to appreciate uh, this book as much as other people have, okay? Uh, because frankly, I'm still, I still have PTSD from uh, reading this and finally learning uh, what was happening during the Reformation. So. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, keep on reading. Cuídense mucho, mi gente. Sigan leyendo. Los quiero mucho. Adiós.